one and a two and a three. Hello, my name is Lee, and today I will talk about my opinion and thoughts of the about the second episode of Star Trek Picard. If you haven't checked out the first video about the first episode, you should do that probably if you want. <laughs> it would be appreciated. Uh, sorry if I look not as <laughs> as great today. I'm very sick and a little bit tired. I'm not very sick. I'm I'm somewhat sick. I took notes this time because it's been a few days since I watched the episode and I knew I wouldn't have time to record. So, um, first of all, I started the first episode saying it. Uh, this series asked a lot of questions, or a lot of questions came up, and the final rating would depend on how well they can answer them. I didn't specify which questions, though. The so I want to do that really quick. The obvious ones are, of course, plot-related, like what's up with the androids, what's up with the Borg, what's up with the Romulans, you know, stuff like that. But what uh, I thought, what the number one question in my mind was, and they already answered this, I'm afraid they answered this completely in <laughs> episode two, because I didn't really like the explanation, is how could the Romulans, like some a bunch of Romulan action heroes run around all over Earth and like with assault rifles and shoot everywhere. And how could they do that? Like how could they even get to Earth? How could they operate on Earth without Starfleet security, whatever local security, homeland security, Earth security, whatever. Or the police force. Anyone notice? Or yeah, that was pretty weird but they answered it saying it's like an extremist group of the Romulans like the Tal Shia equivalent to the Tal Shia like super secret and that's like my first point is the, the Vadwash or something it's a really dumb name but Star Trek has a lot of dumb names so that's not a negative of this episode I just thought it something cooler like Tal Shia sounds cool, Vadvash sounds dumb. And of course, there are admirals that have infiltrated Starfleet. Let's get. The, the, I took notes, so I don't know why I'm doing this very disorganized fashion. Let's do it from the beginning. I really liked the scenes with the android or androids on Mars. That was a cool action sequence, and I always like over-the-top violence. I don't always like it. I didn't like it in Discovery. <laughs> but it was cool seeing the android, like, it they clearly, or at least the one we saw, was, like, inferior to Data in, in many ways, like, very unnatural. And they made it on purpose so that he looked unnatural, too. And what I noticed is um, it felt kind of weird, but I guess it will mo go more in depth, I hope, in the future. How we saw Data struggle to become a person and then the EMH struggle in Voyager, they took it even a lot further than on TNG. Like that was a very often recurring plot thread that the doctor didn't want to have a slave race created of EMHs. And the, we, we already saw Starfleet fleet did that, like with the dilithium mines. Of course, that's dumb to send holograms into dilithium mines with pickaxes. <laughs> but <laughs> disregarding how dumb it is, because it is Voyager after all, <laughs> it was a very powerful story and it felt like yeah, the Doctor reached something, and Data, too, like, wasn't that in the measure of a measure of a man, that they didn't want to create a slave race of androids, and then they did, apparently, like, ten androids just standing in a storage shed, that 
and waiting for work, having no day off and stuff. That's, I don't know, that it seemed like, I hope they do something with it. Because Star Trek is supposed to be optimistic and we saw two main characters with a lot of focus, the MH and Data, fight for their rights and the rights of other um, sentient artificial life. And I guess kind of seeing the Mars scenes made it seem like it was all in vain. It was all for nothing. And now androids are banned. And who knows how miserable holograms are in this timeline. Yeah, but I really like the visuals. I like the act acting of the android guy. Or I don't know if they used a lot of CG to make him look more unnatural. Maybe it was CG in that case. It's a fantastic job because it looks like a, an actor. Uh, a few nitpicks. Why can a ground console on Mars of some random workers who do, who knows what, what they are doing on Mars, like shipyards are up there, what are you doing on the ground, man? Why can they hack into doom lasers that are in orbit? Second question, why are there doom lasers in orbit of Mars? Like, okay, if they are weapons platforms, we saw some more mobile, what looked like missiles or drones in when the Borg invaded uh, the Sol system. In best of both worlds. But we didn't see weapons platforms. It just seemed like very convenient for the plot, you know. That there are doom lasers easily hackable from any ground console in orbit of Mars that can target Mars, like why is that a thing that they can do? Why would they ever need that other than for potential terrorist attacks to succeed? And we didn't see Mars really terraformed, which I I mean we could just as well see have seen a part of Mars that wasn't terraformed. So that's not a nitpick, it's more like I wish we would have seen some green parts of Mars. Because all the while back in ENT, uh, Enterprise, like Archer visited Mars and the atmosphere was already enough so that if they wore like face protection and some oxygen and like a really thick jacket, they could walk around. That was really cool in that episode that they already came that far. So by the time of TNG, supposedly, it was very terraform. We had one hologram program of Tom Paris, like he had a romantic date he prepared for the doctor, I believe, on the holodeck on Mars. It looked very much like Mars there too, like red. I don't know how they terraformed Mars, it still looks like in uninhabitable in the future. It would have been cool to finally see some green parts of Mars. Here's my note about a second Talshia with a dumber name. <laughs> I just thought, like, why? The, the question is, why do you need to create a different Talshia? You already have the Talshia. Or you could have done a normal terrorist sub-sect group, whatever, of the Romulans. It didn't need to be this really mysterious oath from... Thousands of years ago, older than the Talchia. It it sounds so far fetched that we've never heard of it. Not in that one episode where Troy is on an, on a warbird. Not in uh, Enterprise where we saw some of the Romulans. Not on in Nemesis. Like Nemesis is like the direct prequel to the series, I guess. And since when do Romulans hate AI and androids and sentient computers? That was never established. And I'm aware you can make up stuff as you go along. And it, I mean, we didn't hear a lot about Romulans, period. So it's not like it's a continuity error. It's more like I wish they picked up more stuff from the series that we know or that would make more sense in hindsight. 
but there are Romulans have interacted with the Enterprise where data was and it never came up. And Nemesis would have been perfect. It was all about Romulans. You could have thrown in... I mean, obviously back then they didn't know what the writers of Picard now wanted to do. But it always is disappointing if they just make stuff up that doesn't fit into pre-established things. At this point I would have just liked, set, set this a hundred years into the future. We don't need to really see Picard. I guess now I'm criticizing the series itself, not this episode. This is, I'm going too far, sorry. Yeah. It's just... It came out of nowhere. And that's what I disliked. One thing they did do, and that's typically Star Trek, it always happens in every series, is that Starfleet admirals either evil, incompetent, or otherwise bad or corrupted. And that's a trend they continued, and it's the one trend, the one thing I hate that they continue. <laughs> I, the only reason why I don't really like the newer Star Trek series is because they have like nothing in common with the older ones. It's like not a Star Trek series in that sense, it's more like a series in the Star Trek universe, you know? And it, I liked Star Trek for other reasons. And the one thing I hated about old Star Trek is every admiral is bad. Like, okay, you can laugh at it, it's funny, but... This one's trying to be more serious, to stand on its own, to not rely on the old tropes. And then they use the oldest trope there is, like all the way in the original series. Every admiral or commodore or like what what were they called I don't know just random Starfleet people were always terrible and now we have one admiral who's an asshole the first one one admiral who's just a Romulan in disguise and she has another Starfleet personnel whatever she is who's also Romulan in disguise and I'm like come on Starfleet you've been infiltrated by the bluegill things season one TNG, by Changelings in Deep Space Nine, there have been Breen attacks that devastated San Francisco, or I guess one attack. There was a coup by another evil admiral during Deep Space Nine, and I guess Tom Paris's father was an asshole, he's also an admiral. So much terrible stuff happened, and you can't, like, do... A simple DNA test for every new admiral or a crazy in the head test for new admirals. What are you doing? I guess it's like it's that old trope and I hate it. Why do there need to be traitors? I mean it, it is a good explanation why the Romulans can do whatever they want to do on Earth but Earth is supposed to be a paradise. That's what Deep Space Nine and TNG told us. Why is it such a corrupted shithole? I don't like that. And I hope that at least they expose all of the Romulan traitors somehow in this series and get rid of them. Just make Earth a better place, please. As for the new characters... I guess that Romulan, the sexy Romulan, yeah, he's evil too, but probably won't be as evil because he's sexy. It's also, it's, I don't know, I am not into manly men, but maybe the ladies can enlighten me. Is he really that sexy, the guy, the actor, or I guess the character too? He just looks like a guy to me and not particularly attractive but apparently he's like and I don't know that it's like not a show don't tell thing they, they tell us two times they mention that he's sexy I think in this episode like they really hammer it home and that it's just awkward it's weird like when the series like hey you 
in front of the TV, this guy is sexy, you know? It's like weird. I don't know. I think the characters are a little boring. The, I guess the android lady is decent. I think she's okay. I like what they did on the cube with the... It seems like they only salvage and repair or not repair. Like They free the Romulan Borg. I guess how many Romulan Borg are there really? We know that they target some colonies in the neutral zone at some point. But that could have also been the Borg cube that was later destroyed. So I mean, we never really heard a lot about what happened in the Romulan side of the universe. So it could make sense. Yeah, it, it makes sense. That's not a nitpick. It's just me thinking out loud. I noticed there are a lot of female characters. I like that. Like Star Trek in the past had often more male characters and the few female characters we had were pretty terribly written or treated by the staff. <laughs> so it's a trend I like. I just noticed it. It makes sense for the Romulans because actually I think if you look at percentage wise the Romulans might have been a species or a faction where we did see a lot of uh, female high-ranking characters like on that one Troy episode for example like there always seems to be at least one female commander or sub commander or captain or admiral or whatever they have I don't know I thought the episode was a bit boring <laughs> I would not want to say boring because it it's not like I was actively thinking like, oh man, this is boring, or when is this over? But it was rather slow, a lot of talk heavy, which is fine, I like talk heavy. I don't need action. I thought the Mars action we got was great, I like that. It's just I'm worried because the one question that was answered that I had, how can Romulans operate on Earth, it was answered. And I didn't like how it was answered. So I'm immediately pessimistic that, oh no, every answer will suck. They will bring out all the tropes I hate. And uh, I just hope that's not the case. I really hope that's not the case. A little nitpick again. I'm good at those. <laughs> I find the intro very boring. I didn't mention this in the first episode, like the opening credits. It's so boring and simple. I guess simple is not bad. But what I always liked about Star Trek, any old Star Trek series, is how, how exciting the intros are. The original series is just classic. TNG is one of my favorites. It's like this optimistic, happy march, and very grand, you know. Voyager is just beautiful. That's my favorite intro, actually. And from a visual standpoint, too. Like, the music is great, and the visuals are great. And it's just, it showcases the ship. Deep Space Nine, it was very calm. I guess it's the closest to boring we got, the first Deep Space Nine intro. But it was also very majestic like seeing the ds9 model and the slow zoom in and it was it wasn't boring it was very you know it made you feel like wow this is space and this is a big ass sta base station enterprise of course everyone shits on and i understand why but i have to give it credit it kind of fit the theme of the series, which was being bad. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. But at least it wasn't boring. It was something. But this is just like the Discovery intro. I hate to bring up Discovery and always in a negative light. 
Sorry, I'm sorry about that. But at least the intro isn't criticizing this series itself. It's like I said, it's a nitpick. It's just so boring. I wish they could have done something more exciting for the intro. And I guess my general problem overall, first let's do the verdict. I liked the episode decently enough. I disliked parts of it. I disliked the answers we got. I gave the first one a 3 out of 5 and I will give this one a 3 out of 5 too. I, I just hope there will be this moment that makes it worth sticking with this series. I know we are only two episodes in, so I'm already pessimistic. I'm sorry. I'm always pessimistic, but it's not bad. If it stays like this, then I will at least continue watching. It's not that bad. I think the overall explanation for why I'm so negative is the one thing I really liked about Star Trek is how episodic it is. And I know everyone hates episodic stuff nowadays. And it, people get very hateful on the internet if you say you like episodic things. That goes for like anime as well. I've heard it a lot. No, actually, I haven't met anyone in the internet. I often go to discussions who likes episo episodic stuff still. They say it's outdated. But for me, how it feels for me is in Star Trek you get a whole story in an episode. Of course, it's not as fleshed out, but the way you can have continuity from episode to episode is with character development. Like, you have small stories, and obviously parts of them are, all, like, there will be character episodes, there will be some episodes furthering a big overall story, then just a filler episode that has a few nice character moments, and you characterize and develop all characters within those stories. You don't need one big story. And why I dislike one big story things, like one story per season, is... You only get like one big episode or like a movie. You could view it as a very long movie instead of these small episodes. it's It feels like less, even though it has just as much runtime, so to speak. I, that's how it feels to me. I, I'm not sure whether you can understand these feelings, but I hope you can somewhat. Yeah, I hope we see a cool ship soon. There's a lot of new characters that Picard like is best buddies with, and it always confuses me because I think, wait, am I supposed to recognize this character? But I think they're all just new characters. Like Maurice the Doctor, or a weird lady living somewhere in the middle of nowhere character. Yeah, we still haven't seen Seven or Riker and his wife. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, sorry if I'm, my thoughts aren't always a joy to listen to, but I guess a lot of people are already praising it. So maybe this opinion can act as a nice little counterbalance, you know? Yeah, I don't take it too seriously. It's It's only a series. I say that as a huge Star Trek fan myself, but if you dislike Picard, you still have a lot of other stuff to look forward to and to rewatch. I'm rewatching a lot of D TNG, DS9, original series right now, and I love it. I still love it. I know exactly what will happen. The episodes are still great, so just give the new stuff a chance. I'm giving it a chance, even though I'm very negative. Hope you enjoyed these thoughts. My name is Lee. I hope to see you soon in the next episode. Peace out. Wait, no, where is the hand here? Peace out.